An ejection seat is a system designed to rescue the pilot or other crew of an aircraft in an emergency. In most designs, the seat is propelled out of the aircraft by an explosive charge or rocket motor, carrying the pilot with it. The concept of an ejectable escape crew capsule has also been tried. Once clear of the aircraft, the ejection seat deploys a parachute. The first ejection seats were developed independently during World War II by Heinkel and Swedish SAAB. Almost since airplanes started flying, people have been figuring the quickest way to get out when they fail. Bungee cord and compressed air escape systems date back to the 1910s. By September 1941, the Germans were test-firing dummies from the back seat of a Junkers Ju-87. Early ejection seats had difficulty just clearing the Stuka's tail fin. As aircraft speed and required ejection power increased, air bottles became impractically heavy. It is important to note that little more than a month after Pearl Harbor, when the United States was belatedly gearing up for war, Germany was already testing jet fighters. Early models were powered by compressed air and the first aircraft to be fitted with such a system was the Heinkel He-280 prototype jet engine fighter. One of the He-280 test pilots, Helmut Schenk, became the first person to escape from a stricken aircraft with an ejection seat on January 13, 1942 after his control surfaces iced up and became inoperative. The Heinkel He-280 was an early turbojet-powered fighter aircraft designed and produced by the German aircraft manufacturer Heinkel. It was the first jet fighter to fly in the world. Heinkel placed great emphasis on research into high-speed flight and on the value of the jet engine. The company opted to start work on producing a jet fighter during late 1939. Incorporating a pair of turbojets, for greater thrust, these were installed in a mid-wing position. It also had a then-uncommon tricycle undercarriage while the design of the fuselage was largely conventional. During the summer of 1940, the first prototype airframe was completed, however, it was unable to proceed with powered test flights due to development difficulties with the intended engine. Thus, it was initially flown as a glider until suitable engines could be made available six months later. The lack of state support protracted engine development, and thus setting back work on the He-280, nevertheless, it is believed that the fighter could have been made operational earlier than the competing Messerschmitt Me-262, and offered some advantages over it. The reason for this cancellation has been attributed to combination of both technical and political factors, the similar role of the Me-262 was certainly influential in the decision. Accordingly, only the nine test aircraft were ever built, at no point did the He-280 ever attain operational status or see active combat. In January 1942, Heinkel Company test pilot Helmut Schenk flew a Heinkel He-280 prototype with four pulse jet engines. They didn't provide enough power for takeoff, so the Heinkel was tethered to an Heinkel He-111 tow plane. Unfortunately, that kicked up so much snow that when Schenk reached 7,900 feet and the bomber crew dropped the heavy towline, it remained frozen to his jet. Flying, let alone landing, was impossible, but luckily Heinkel was also working on another innovation. I jettisoned the canopy and then pulled the release lever for the seat, Schenk recalled, and was thrown clear of the aircraft without coming in contact with it. A blast of compressed air fired him, seat and all, out of the cockpit. He landed unharmed via parachute, the first man to escape an aircraft using an ejection seat. The first operational type built anywhere to provide ejection seats for the crew was the Heinkel He-219 night fighter in 1942. As the first operational military jet in late 1944 to ever feature one, the winner of the German People's Fighter Home Defense Jet Fighter Design Competition, the lightweight Heinkel He-162, featured a new type of ejection seat, this time fired by an explosive cartridge. In this system, the seat rode on wheels set between two pipes running up the back of the cockpit. When lowered into position, caps at the top of the seat fitted over the pipes to close them. Cartridges, 
basically identical to shotgun shells, were placed in the bottom of the pipes, facing upward. When fired, the gases would fill the pipes, popping the caps off the end, and thereby forcing the seat to ride up the pipes on its wheels and out of the aircraft. By the end of the war, the Dornier Du-335, primarily from it having a rear-mounted engine of the twin engines powering the design powering a pusher propeller located at the aft end of the fuselage presenting a hazard to a normal bailout escape, and a few late-war prototype aircraft were also fitted with ejection seats. It's thought some 60 Luftwaffe pilots ejected during the war, but how many actually survived is unknown. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.